everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we are going to talk all about blending so we're going to talk about uh, lots of different kinds of blending uh, very quickly today we're going to talk about using glazes to create your blends we're going to talk about loaded brush we're going to talk about feathering and a little bit of two brush blending which are very related so that's a lot to get through and we're going to use this little mr knight here who's uh in this little turquoise and purple setup so um, we're going to kind of move through all this. Obviously, blending is a thing that I see a lot of people ask me about. This is one of those things that just has a lot of questions. And what I'll say before I get into any of the techniques is you can set yourself up for success. And you can see what I've done here is I, I had Zenithal highlighted this guy. And then I just did some thin glazes of color over so you can still see the darker and the lighter spots, right? Um, and this goes back to an earlier video I had. I think this is maybe like the second hobby cheating video where I talk about using this technique of zenithal and thin glazes. So you can see already we've got the darks up here and the lights down here, right? And what we're going to do now is build on this, okay? So what we want to do is we're going to kind of move through these. And I'm actually going to start with... Um, I'm going to start with one that has multiple different sort of uses. And that is, I'm going to start with glazes. And generally the best, so, so what is a glaze? Let's just start there. I'm going to get some more paint on my palette here as I'm talking because I'm, I want to be able to jump right into it. But what a glaze is, is pretty simple. It's just a very, very thin down amount of paint. Now, I've heard a lot of different recipes for glazes, and the reality is there's not one universal recipe because the base paint you're working with could be very different. For example, if you're working with some game air, this is already quite thin because it's for airbrush. Whereas if you're starting with like a model color paint, which is quite thick, you're going to need to, you know, to turn that into a glaze is going to be a much different thing. So I've heard everything from five drops of water to one drop of paint to 10 drops of water to one drop of paint. In any cases, I would recommend the thinner and glaze medium. I mean, it's right there in the name. There it is. Look at it. Are your friend um, so you know use these it helps your paint get thinner and still maintain a good uh, consistency um, you can also use some retarder medium uh, that's Vallejo makes some as do many other companies uh, it's it's very valuable stuff for a lot of different reasons I actually have a little mixture here on my palette that I'm putting on a retarder medium plus a little water and then a little glaze or sorry a little glaze and thinner medium so if we want to make a glaze, what we're going to do is we're going to obviously get our paint thinned way down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and make just a white glaze here. So I'm going to take some white, move it over here on my palette, mix in some thinner medium. And we want to get, you know, we want to get enough paint in there, but we do want it to be pretty thin and we want it to be pretty watery. Now I'm also working on a wet palette here. Okay, so how thin is it? something like that and I'm gonna be probably a little thicker here than I normally would be with a glaze just because I glazes don't really move the color so much and you can barely see their effect on camera if I keep it you know completely thin so and I so I'm gonna go a little thicker you might want to be a little thinner than this so one of the very straightforward things you can do with glazes is you got it way thin down is you can use it to just create your simple highlights so here's our, our lighter part of the cloak right so I'm just going to drag that glaze down there. One of the tricks is you don't want a lot of paint on your brush. You're not doing a wash. And if it, the color barely moves, you've done it right. Glazes are very subtle. You don't want to let the paint build up down here at the bottom like where it might catch the model you know the edge you all and with glazes you always want to be moving in the direction that you want to catch the most paint so for example I want the bottom of the cloak here to be the highest highlight so the only place my brush is touching is going down right now it's just about that simple you can see how that looks a little lighter now okay the other trick with glazes is that you have to let them dry completely in between applications. Generally with glazes, you want to apply a lot of them. 
How many? I don't know. Until it get, looks good, that's the answer to the question. Um, and it's best to sort of work your way around the model, right? You're kind of touching every spot that has this color. You're kind of hitting everything. Glazes also work best on larger flat surfaces. Like if you can see these little ridges here on his band, I wouldn't try to glaze these really unless I'm doing some kind of crazy competition piece. It's just too small. It's going to take a hundred coats to move that paint, right? You're better off using a slightly thicker paint and just going in and if you really want to create some white on the tip then just go in and put in a dab right so you can actually move the color and you can see how that shows up if i did that down here it would be so stark right look at how stark that is of a line you can see right where that paint started because of how thick it is all right so glazes are a way to just very carefully drag in color the idea being because the paint is so thin when you start up here at the top and you drag it toward the bottom and you keep doing it and so you can even slowly do less and less at so your first glaze you might start here and go down and then here and go down and then your third and fourth glaze you go here and go down and here and go down and then here and so on and so forth you get the idea constantly glazing less areas the other big thing you can do with glazes is you can use it to bring your color together and this is what i do a lot so i just Let's say, let's, let's t attack this glaze from the other side. Let's say I do wanna, I wanna over highlight. Glazes can also be a great shortcut to, to kind of like that, the glazing method I was talking about was how you move color slowly. So there, I just slapped some heavy white on the bottom of this, right? And it's pretty stark. Like you can see that line. We're gonna let that dry while I prepare up another glaze because the other thing you can do with glazes is you can take your mid-tone color in between this white and say this dark, very dark purple up here, and you can use a glaze to bring this all together. Okay? So I'm gonna take uh, some purple on my palette here, mix it up, we're gonna get a bunch of water in that. I'm already on a wet palette, so it's fairly watered. We're gonna get some of our retardant medium and thinner medium in there, which again has more water in it. And like I said, when you're working with a glaze, you don't want a huge amount of the brush. You're not trying to load up your brush, okay? Your brush ferrule should be enough to handle it. So once it's totally dry, I'm then just going to go ahead, and I can do two things. I could glaze over the whole thing and just try to build this up in layers, right? So I can just, in the same way, I can glaze the purple over the white. There we go. Got the little edge off. And all of a sudden, it starts coming right back into into balance, that line is not as stark, right? Just that one simple glaze. And obviously if I was really gonna try to even this out, I would want to apply multiple glazes. Um, I might be able, uh, I might also want to just, there I dragged it down because I was just trying to cover the whole thing. If I was just trying to smooth the edge, which is another way you can use glazes. Sorry, I'm just making sure that's dry. You could also just grab and drag up into the color you want. Right, so I'm just going, I'm not hitting the whole thing. I'm just going up over the edge of the purple to smooth out the transition, okay? Now, let's go right from that into two brush blending because it's the next logical step. Two brush blending is doing what I just did, but then you have a second brush. If I sound funny, it's because I'm holding my one paintbrush in my mouth. And I'm gonna get my white on my second paintbrush and I'm gonna pull it down in the same area. And while that paint is still wet, I'm gonna come in with a very light amount of purple on the other one and pull it back up. And that's the idea, that I smooth out this hard line, right, by having a mix of these two colors on two different brushes, generally with some amount of retardant medium, retarder medium, sorry, so they dry slowly. Now, when you're going like so stark, like I'm, you know, going white, oops. That's a, that's a fun problem that can happen. You can forget which brush you're using like a dummy. Um, when you're going so very stark, like hard white to hard purple, you have to be very careful
and you have to take your time mixing it in there. And I should say you have a limited amount of time to work here because if the paint starts drying or seeps in too deep, what's going to happen is you'll pull up other layers. So you got to be a little careful. But there you go. You can see how blending that back and forth, now we've got a nice smooth transition, right? And then I could go back to my white glaze, right? And just kind of bring up this edge a little more with a glaze if I wanted to. So you can see how these techniques work in tandem. Um, so there I can pull the highlight up even more. And you could just, I could just keep applying that until I liked exactly where it was at. Okay, so two brush, pretty straightforward. It works best when you've got, if you're gonna work with thicker paints, all right, like I was working with two glazes, so I was able to mix two fairly disparate colors onto the brushes fairly quickly. If you're gonna work with um, two fair, if you're gonna work with thicker paints uh, when you're doing two brush, then you want to have, like, you'll wanna block in your colors. If you hear people say block in your colors, what that would mean is up here would be a darker purple black, like a purple black, regular purple, purple white, some white, right? You'd block in those colors, and then you'd start mixing them here on the palette, having like mid-tones, and you'd go between like this one and this one. You know, you'd create little mid-lines and little mid-lines, little mid-lines. You just slowly smooth it all out, and then once, and then when you're getting to the very end to kind of like smooth those final transitions, you use your retardant medium and just fade and just kind of fuzz the edges. To mix them together like that okay so that's two brush blending um you can see it produces some nice effects let's see if we can get that not in shadow this is very reflective so it doesn't show up great there we go okay nice smooth transition all right so let's talk about feathering which is related if we're going to move if we're, we can it's a it's an easy jump from two brush blending into feathering so feathering Let's see, where would be a good place to feather on this guy? And that's the other thing I want to mention is that all of these techniques have uh, sort of different ways they can be used. Things like glazing and two brush blending work really good on these large flat areas like this. Um, feathering can be used for some smaller spaces, but you got to be a little more careful with it. So what feathering is, is I'm actually going to turn this knight upside down because it's going to make my life easier if I do so. Feathering is when you take a small amount, or, you know, some amount of paint, and you kind of just push it on there, okay? So there we've got some white paint. Then you clean off the brush, say on a wet sponge, or something like that. Then you come in here, you wet the area underneath it with the liquid, and then you just sort of pull it down into that water. Okay? So you just kind of feather that color out. Um, feathering requires, again, your paint to have some, it's, it shouldn't be drying quickly. So in general, using it straight out of the pot and trying to feather isn't gonna be a real winning proposition. Um, you want your paint to have a slow dry time. Things like scale color, uh, scale 75 paint, which I've talked about many times. One of the advantages of scale 75 paints is they have a, a, a retarder draw, drying time. So like, let me show you a good example on this night. We'll get some of this. This is a nice light turquoise that'll highlight this, this color quite well. So we'll get some of this out on our palette here. You'll see what I mean. Now I, I'm not gonna thin this in any way, okay? Other than the fact that it's on a wet palette and my brush is wet. That's it. Okay, so let's talk about his shoulder here which undoubtedly would be highlighted, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and drag some of that across there. We can see that. Now again, that's produced a, a really hard line. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna wipe off our brush. And then we're just gonna feather it out. We're just gonna smooth the edges. Just kinda of drag it down And then we can keep doing that. We can put a little more on and then just drag it down, just smooth out that edge, right? Now 
And so you can see now it's a little less harsh, right? Still has a hard shadow right here, but that's because I was pulling it in these directions. Let's fix this one a little bit up top here. So we place a little bit of it in there. Again, I could I could do this even better if I put in a little retardant medium or something like that, right? And then we just drag it out. We just smooth that color out. Okay? So feathering is one of those things that it's it's not super tough. It's just something you've got to work with and practice, getting your brush control down. I'll tell you what, uh, and beyond the scale 75, which I'm not sure that a lot of people probably have had these paints in the States yet. They're kind of still hard to get. That being said, let me tell you where feathering works fantastic, and that's with your shade colors. Now, this is a Vallejo model wash, but you could just as easily be talking about something like your Citadel shades or anything like that. Those have a fairly slow drying time, and so quite easily, uh, they're also quite thin, so they feather very nicely. Um, like most of these other things, if you're working in stuff that's somewhat thinned, um, you're going to have a better experience with this. Okay. So let me show you what I mean. Let's feather in some shadows. We want to build our low, our low tones in here. So I'm going to take this area of his cape here, where it's already kind of dark, and we're going to darken it up even more. So I got some of my Vallejo wash out there. Okay. Now what I'm going to do... I'm going to place that paint in there. Let's see a little more. Okay. So you can see right now that's very dark, pretty messy. It's not great, right? Okay. So we're going to then. I've got a little more time on this one because you can see it's still wet. And then what I'm going to do is just grab the end of it and start feathering that shade out. And you can see how as I drag it out, what happens is the line just smooths right up. All right? Let's see if we can uh, let's see if we can find a nice a nice bigger example. Let's put a nice shadow right here down this purple. Okay? That'll be really stark since we just highlighted it white. All right, so we're going to take the black, and we're just going to lay it right in there. All right? That is really noticeable. Okay. So we rinse off our, uh, our brush. And then we're going to go ahead and go in there, and we're just going to feather it out. This can sometimes work better if you have another brush handy. You did instead, just much like two brush blending, except instead of having a second brush with paint, you just have a second brush with just water. Okay. So, like for example, here's my other brush. And there we go. You can see how we smooth that line. Look at how much smoother that is, right? We can do it again. We can and we could repeat this process to just build up that shadow. Let's say we want to build some more up top here. I'm going to pull some paint up. Okay. And now I got this big dark spot. So I've got just the wet brush. And I'm just going to pull it down. And smooth it out. Pull it down and wipe it off. And there we go. Now all of a sudden we've got a nice smooth shadow. Right? There you go. So that's feathering. Lots of examples of it. You can see how you can use it both to create your darker spots, your lighter spots. You can blend two colors together in much the same way. If you have, just like I did with the uh, the lighter turquoise up here, right? If I wanted to mix in, say, uh, a magenta into the middle here. Let's play around with that. Let's give that a shot. Let's mix a little magenta into this purple. Let's say we want to liven up this purple color a little. Okay. We can do that. 
got some magenta on my palette here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually try to work it in as the mid-tone here. So I'm going to lay my magenta in there. Again, I've got a little bit of, uh, it's thinned way down, and I've got a little bit of retarder medium in it. Okay, I'm going to take my other brush, which is ready to wiggle, ready to go. And there you go. You can see we just smoothed it right out, right? Just a very light transition of it now. Let's do it again. We'll lay some more color in there. It's a little rough since the black isn't totally dry, so. Then we just get up and smooth that right down and right up and in. And now you can see we've got that nice hint of magenta in there, but no line. Now I could work in thicker paints. I could do this in lot, you know, repeated things. It depends on what you're trying to go for. Okay, why? Why am I working and thinning this and trying to get? these multiple colors in here. The answer is because of layers of paint and what they do. Let's talk a moment for why we even blend it all, okay? Before we go on to the last and probably most complicated technique, but the one that can save you the most time. Why are we worrying about any of this at all? Well, the answer is because, um, have you ever seen a miniature online and you look at it and the color just looks so rich. It just pops off the off the, the page, the web page you're looking at. There's probably a couple reasons for that. One, it's probably high contrast, so there's a lot of tonal variation. Think about the most recent Slayer Sword winner. When you look at the green on that gut rot spume, there's points that are almost pure white traveling through blues and greens and turquoises down to spots that are almost pure black. Huge amount of tonal variation in a small space. Two, color saturation. Every time you put a new layer of paint on, you go one, two, three, four, you know, you're layering these paints on, right? And it's not, I'm not talking about layering like the technique of applying highlights. I just mean every time you put another layer of paint on the, in the generic sense, every layer of paint is transparent. And so every layer reflects some amount of light and lets some amount of light through. The more you have those thin layers, the more different layers are reflecting light back up. When it hits your eye, you're getting hit by all these slightly different layers and tones and colors of paint. And when your eye puts it together, when your brain puts it together, really, what it creates is this richer saturation of color, okay? That's why some miniatures appear really rich in tone because there's 15, 20, 25 layers of very thin paint. Each one is hitting just a little bit of the light back into your eye. And it's visually, like the information that's hitting your brain is a richer set of, of data than one layer that is the same equivalent thickness of 25, okay? So that's one of the reasons you can, you can play with this kind of blending to work in these different colors and to layer all these paints on top of each other, okay? All right. So let's talk about the last one, which is Loaded Brush. Okay, so Loaded Brush was created by, not certainly not me, I am not near talent enough. This is created by Ben Kometz. And if you wanna see really uh, the master at work, I'll link the video from Painting Buddha where he, <laughs> Ooh, excuse me, where he, um, where he shows this technique off. I just kinda wanna talk about it more from, uh, really frankly, a novice perspective, because this is one I'm still working with as well. And I'll, I'll see if I can talk you through the challenges that I had. Because when you watch Ben do it, he makes it look so flawless and easy because the guy is truly one of the greatest miniature painters in the world. But the idea of Loaded Brush is pretty simple. And, and the story as he tells it is this. He was kind of working quickly and didn't clean his brush off and went into the paint 
and ended up sort of mixing them on the brush. And that is the basic concept of the thing, right? You're mixing the paint actually legitimately on your brush with your mid-tone being your main color and your highlight being just a tip color. So let me explain what I mean. First off, to do a loaded brush, it's good to have a brush that's got a pretty solid tip on it. Let me just say that. Um, a crappy brush is not going to serve you well with this technique. Not at all. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use some loaded brush down here to turn these folds and bring them up and put that work magenta into them, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is water up my magenta just a little here. And what I want to get is a fairly water, well, a thinned consistency of magenta on my brush. Let's see if you can see that. There you go. Never get your paint all the way down towards your ferrule. See how only about the front half of my brush has paint? Good. That's what you want. And not a lot. You can see bristles, not paint, gathering on the outside. You want to wipe off that excess paint. In fact, even though it's still a little heavy. Then what you're going to do is you're going to just touch the tip with white or some similar highlight color, okay? And that's probably a bit much. Like, you really have to just touch the tip. So I'm going to take a little of that off. Okay. Especially since I'm going to work in such a small area. The idea of the thing is that when you first touch the brush to the miniature, you're touching very lightly, and you're going to be putting down the white, right? But then as you press harder, what happens is the magenta comes out and mixes on the brush with the paint, right? So the idea is tiny little dot of white. I start here, and then the more I go up, the harder I press and the more of that actual tone I get. Now, you can still use glazing and stuff to bring this back in line, right? Mm, too much there. Got a little too much white on my brush. You have to be kind of careful with this. This is a thing, like I said, this can be an amazing time saver when you get it down because you can do a fairly complex highlight really fast. Let's, uh, let's try it on another section of him, because I don't like how much room I've got there on that purple. Let's try it up here on this shoulder blade we were looking at. Okay, we'll do it up here on this shoulder blade. So, we're going to go ahead and work in some of our turquoise. That's not watery enough. There we go. Okay. And then we're just going to get a touch of white. Or, again, I'm using white just because it's stark and it shows up on camera. You don't have to highlight everything with white. You can use whatever your highlight color is. I'm going to touch and work in that white. And then I'm going to slowly press down and apply more pressure. And what happens is it slowly becomes more of just the turquoise. I go back to the white, a little dab will do you. I'm going to do it the opposite direction, okay, so we're going to come forward. So I go white, and then I press down slightly harder as I go. If it's not blending fast enough, you can always, that means you have too much white, you can always go back and just kind of like drag it a little bit up on your thumb like that, so you pull some of the paint forward, and you can kind of smooth it out. Okay, so there you can see how we got this very nice blend going from the high white right down into that, that deeper or into that normal turquoise very quickly. Let's, uh, let's do it again. We can keep going. And the nice part is you're not reloading your brush with your main color. You're just putting a new little teeny dot of white each time. So let's start up here. We'll do this part that we feathered previously. So we'll go with some white, and then we just start pushing down. Again, sometimes we got to just help it along a little bit, depending on how small the area is, right? 
And so now what we get is this nice smooth transition. from white down into the turquoise. Again, what can you do in the end to correct all this if you're not exactly happy with where it is? Why, you can go back to your old friend, the glaze, right? You can work that turquoise down into a glaze. In fact, we'll just do that real quick since I've got some on there. You can see how that looks right now. Obviously, we would want to let that dry, but I could work some of my turquoise into a glaze. Nice thin glaze of that turquoise, ready to go, loaded up. And then what could I do? I can just even all that out, including the darker parts by running that nice thin turquoise glaze over it, drawing it toward the middle where I want it to be the main color. Right, and that just smooths everything out. So then we let that dry. And what are we gonna get? We're gonna get this nice transition from white up into this darker color, and then up into white on his shoulder again, okay? So there you go. Those are the three different kinds of blendings I most commonly utilize. Um, each of them is a little hard to show here. Each of them still generally requires multiple applications. It's not like any of this is just one time and perfect. You know, um, I might start with the white, like with a little loaded brush, and then kind of force some of it down like that. Um, there's lots of different ways you could go about this. The key is to use these techniques together to create, you know, a, a more rich, color-saturated, well-blended miniature. All right? So, glazing. Let's, so we're going to real quick just burn through everything. Glazing. Super thin, somewhere between 5 and 10 parts, you know, maybe water or and or thinner glaze medium uh, to paint. Um, do use at least some thinner or glazed medium. I really would recommend picking it up. It, can, it makes your paint stay consistent and it helps that keeps the pigment from breaking up. It can also, the thinner medium especially, can help you from getting overly glossy paint when you get it down into a glaze, which is, you know, a challenge that you can often have. Um, you can use glazes to just slowly change the color like I did where I dragged the white down here, where you just slowly create a highlight. You can also use it to bring two disparate areas together by either reglazing the whole thing after undershading or just glazing in the middle to smooth out a transition. Two brush blending, much the same thing. It's just instead you have your close colors here and here adjacent to each other, and then you kind of overpaint with one brush and overpaint in the other direction with the other brush. The key with both of those techniques is directionality. The darker color comes up, the lighter color goes down or whatever where they're mixing. You paint you pull away, so it's a slow mix every time, right, with both brushes. Feathering, where you apply a small amount of the paint to one area. Clean your brush, either on a sponge or if you want to be gross, you can lick the paint off completely. Um, and then you go in and you just slowly feather out that color. Um, works great for... Oops, some water in there. There we go. Works great for shades, uh, especially uh, things that have slower drying times. Um, again, with two brush blending and with feathering, some kind of retardant medium, retarder medium is often your friend. Finally, loaded brush, like I said, check out the video from, uh, from Painting Buddha to really see it in action. But the idea is the main part of your brush is about halfway full of your mid-tone paint. The very, very tip just has the lightest touch of your highlight. You touch very lightly your highlight to the area and then just start applying more pressure as you work it out to draw more of the paint up in to the tip, which slowly mixes it on the tip of your brush, okay? And then you can use these in conjunction. You could load a brush to get your basic transition down and then glaze over it to smooth everything out like we did right here, okay? So I hope you enjoyed. This is all, thi that was all things blending. Uh, and uh, hopefully this is useful. You try some of these techniques out I'll throw a little picture in of Mr. Knight here as, as we, with everything we've done, so he's not, you know, in a better lighting condition where you can actually see how this looks. And uh, you can see some of the effects that uh, you'll be able to achieve as well. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, we'll see you next time.